Hello, I just wanted to share this quick video about the progress on the XSI theme for Blender 283, which will probably be released on May. But I'm working on this and I'm trying to um, show you the importance of identifying correctly inside the user interface the different sections and the different functions for Blender. Of course, we're taking in relation what XSI used to do which is um, converge everything that you do on one giant enclosed environment for your animations and your 3D production in general. So what I do here is um, to follow rules, follow design rules and color rules to associate whatever we're doing on the viewport with the rest of the interaction modes that Blender has, for example, if I select this monkey, which contains animation, I can see, you know, the keyframes going red. That means obviously it's animated. If I hover, I can see the color change. And of course, this being green will point to you to, for example, this NLA track, which right now it's um, purplish. But if I press tab, I get to um, edit this. If I press tab again, I go out of the editing strip uh, animation, the NLA clip, and then I come back to this uh, green color. So you can continue seeing how it corresponds to the keyframing that are already created and the action strip. Another thing is that we have the graph editor here and I've simplified the functions that you're going to be using for this, I'm, I need to finish this because whenever you select one of these things, it's going to be shown here. And there's one thing I always see people do whenever they're working in Blender and they get confused, really confused when, they're, when they are animating. And that is that all of the curves are presented to you at the same time. That's not like that in, the, in other softwares like Modo, Maya, and, and Max, etc. Uh, what you want to do here in Blender is just to switch everything off and just activate the curve that you want to work with. For example, let's say I'm going to work on the, I don't know, the X rotation, all right? So I'm just going to switch that on. And then, uh, and then I have my options, you know, to start manipulating whatever I want with that kind of rotation, okay? So that's pretty, pretty easy. But here's the thing. Uh, whenever you do this, um, uh, how do you call this? Uh, splining, whenever you're splining, there's there is a difficulty to identify on the screen what you're doing. Like, what is this? Is this a keyframe? Is this a handle? Is this a uh, I don't know a stepped keyframe? Well, you don't know. So that's why um, I've been working on little nuances, little details. Like for example, whenever you select something in soft image, it will turn red. And if you want to manipulate it or edit it, it will turn yellow. That's like the general rule for this. Let me show you another example. If you select this monkey, you can see in the outline, it's obviously corresponding to white. If I click here, white here in the outline and white here on the 3D viewport. But of course, you know, Blender has multiple selection, of course. So if I select this first, I get this white. And if I select this, um, this one with shift, shift select, you're going to see that this is a cyan. And now it's cyan. This one is white, which continues to be the last selection active. Now, Blender by default does not have any of these uh, correspondence colors when you're working on the interface. And I think after I'm done with the soft image theme, I need to go to Blender and start making this uh, color connection corrections because the, the software will allow you to um, customize it but then I need to send it to review for the devs to consider it first and obviously I need to present the cases on why the Softimage user interface is much rock solid and consistent uh, concerning all of these colors and how people will interact with them and this is important because if you consider that you're working on the action editor, probably on your graph editor, and as well as the timeline, then you need to see that if you select this as a red selection, you know, it's got a color code here on the on the window, but it also corresponds here, as you can see it red, although this channel is activated and this channel is mute, or rather hidden. So if I activate that, 
I know that I'm going to be working on my C location. It doesn't matter if it's the action editor or the graph editor or the uh, animation timeline because I will always see this red correspondence active. And that's what I uh, was uh, meaning to do for a long time. For example, another thing that I have, uh, I have uh, noticed a lot is that people, when come here into Blender, they don't know where the actions or rather the uh, animation clips live. And I wanted to show the correspondence between the NLA and the graph editor. So you can see this, this is, is a green track, right? So if you open that, you have this um, olive uh, colored uh, track, which is basically the action. You can see the icon there, of course, it will serve you to identify. So that's how that thing corresponds to, for example, the dope sheet. You can see this and this. And we're right now on to this this uh, action right here, this 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 element right here. So if you open that, you can see the graph editor and the dope sheet are now correctly identified with the color uh, correspondence. So if you open that, you can see the group there. Let's uh, open here and we can see all the channels that have their respective um, uh, sliders. Okay, so you can animate this via slider or via directly, I'm sorry, via, via slider or directly, you know, creating a keyframe right here, you know. And that's how you get uh, all of this together. For example, here, uh, most people don't know why you have to have such different and uh, many uh, channels active all at the same time, but it will depend on where you are working. Of course, if you're uh, working in the dope sheet, the dope sheet is going to get all of your elements and then the, the, it's going to display them here. So of course I have all of these elements, an armature, uh, monkeys, and even a grease pencil. But of course here on the graph editor, you're going to be working with the one that it's selected. And by the way, you can see the correspondence onto that right here, of course. Uh, the outliner does not identify individual colors like the specialized um, animation windows have, but you can see now that all of this is much sane to read which is what we expect so for now this is just a sneak preview i wanted to give you and let me see if i can you know if you select this for example and then you press tab you're going to come here in the in the pie menu i'm going to go into edit mode look at that fantastic and now i can see my monkey it's on a yellow wireframe which means always editing all right, don't forget that. So if that's the rule, the general rule, of course you can imagine that if you come here to the UV uh, editor, you will see the exact same colors. So there's no reason for me to panic or, or, or that I get lost in this interface because I already know this space corresponds with this space and it's obvious it should correspond to the outline as well, the outliner. And it is, look at this. Right now, this thing is in yellow, which means I am editing this thing, and if I get out of that mode, of course, I go back to my regular white selection. I could fulfill this for uh, different colors and schemes, but like I said before, I'm following rules. I'm not making this uh, capriciously. I'm not making this because I want to. I'm making this because I've been working in uh, 3D animation and, and commercial advertisement for a long time now. And I can tell you right away, Blender is magnificent as a software, but these are areas that need to be improved. And of course, we're all here as a community trying to get exactly that. So let me see what else I can show you right now. Um, yeah, sure. The preview, the preview, um, which for example, uh, sets the preview range here on view. You can come here and set preview range. And now I'm going to draw a box. Let's say that I'm going to draw it all the way over here. And now you can see this obscures and then just leaves you with the area that you're interested in. Of course, you have your markers as well. And I'm trying to adapt everything that we had on Softimage. Of course, you're going to see some of the sections here in the user interface very simplistic because we only have like three or four colors uh, from where we can choose like to create stuff. And that's why you can see this uh, purple bar here and that's why it corresponds with selecting the one NLA clip and then pressing tab so you can see and associate okay I want to additionally create new keyframes and of course that panel right here the end panel the numeric panel is in charge of that whenever you have already created 
your stuff. So tab again, you go out of that mode and then you can you can continue like I don't know, shift duplicate, select your action strips, um, you can stash them, you can create so much things. So yeah, like I said before, I need to finish this. Um, I really, really want uh, to to get all of this uh, very clear because once you see the patterns in the colors like I'm doing right now, everything else becomes easy. I have heard a lot of um, people say that, all right, if you're going to teach Blender, you should not change colors. You should not change the key, the, 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 custom, uh, the input keys. And we agree to some degree. Uh, but in reality is that Blender also needs improvement in this color coding area from section to section, all right? It's, it's not uh, advisable that if you have some kind of selection on the, on the outliner, you have a different selection color scheme here in the NLA or the VSE or grease pencil. I mean, it's just not matching, you know? And that's what I'm trying to do here on the theme. I'm trying to put this all together so that you can you know, directly associate one thing with another. For example, post mode, it's it's uh, bones. Of course, it's uh, selection, and the bones are green coated in soft image. And you can get so much stuff done much quicker. Uh, for example, I decided to shade this, um, which is very different from the entire user interface because on this side in soft image, we used to have a a bar, which which had. Uh, um, relief the buttons like push buttons you know the appearance of a, a bass relief button anyways um that is all guys for now and i'm trying to get this as fast as i can so that you can test it out and it's probably going to be sent to review so that the devs are going to take a look at this and it's um, very good then i guess it will go into the official blender 283 release but for now uh, we have some themes like the XSI theme that was created uh, originally as a base and then the devs took it and pushed it a little bit further and now I'm taking it back so that I can continue to refine one-to-one uh, -one the correspondence with soft image. There are some things that I will not definitely use as they are being used right here because we have, like I mentioned before, we have the options to change and so much customize the Blender interface that at times it feels that I'm leaving a lot of, a lot of choices out because Blender is uh, very much um, editable and customizable for this kind of things. All right, so next thing, I will try to have something much uh, appealing to you, probably physics, probably sculpting, and that's another area we did not have sculpting on Softimage. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is trying to adapt, I'm sorry, object mode, um, it's that I'm going to try to adapt some of the workflows we had from other workspaces and try to recreate them obviously here. But I guess <laughs> this looks weird now, this doesn't look soft image at all. Uh, probably I need to switch some of the, some of the UB, uh, I'm sorry, some of the workspaces around. Um, but we'll get to that. The important thing is that you know how to drive your stuff around. Thank you very much, and don't forget to subscribe. Please stay safe at home until all this quarantine is it's gone.